Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the top eight of the Crush Card Cup. I'm Alex Simo, joined by Joseph Rothschild, Mr. MBT Yu-Gi-Oh! himself for another electrifying commentary. So for this top eight match, we're bringing to you an Eldritch Mirror match, which is uh, actually a bit interesting because we have invoked Eldritch being piloted uh, by our player in the red here. And the reason why this is interesting is because he's going up against uh, the Eldritch player in the blue, who's playing Auroradon Eldritch. So we have like the former best variant of Eldritch going up against the new best version of Eldritch debatably i mean we'll see which one comes out on top but i think it's pretty exciting to see that there are um multiple eldritch decks and multiple variants for people to play and the deck is still undergoing lots of changes joseph thoughts well uh i got a chance to talk to uh pascal keem about uh which version of eldritch uh he prefers and um it was aurora dawn uh just because uh i think correctly um players have been identifying that one big resource that eldritch doesn't take full advantage of is the normal summon and previously the normal summon being reserved for a lister is a fantastic way to flex that into additional negates but it turns out you can build combo boards just as competently as something like ad emancipator with something as simple as a jet synchron and maybe like an eldritch in the graveyard as you've just seen discarded for the jet synchron activation as a further extender i mean we have seen in the last couple of weeks an unbelievable amount of uh combo theory go into this deck uh people can end on auroradon setups of vfd of croc for four i mean just unreal things could be accomplished with this otherwise very competent control deck scares me for the future gotta tell you yeah, absolutely. I mean, no one really thought that Eldritch would undergo this sort of evolution where we're really just seeing this deck that is notoriously known as a control deck having this combo element to it, and that's just disastrous for a multitude of reasons. We've just discussed in length in the past about side decking for a deck like this. I mean, you yeah, have like, the how combo. How do you do it? Do you right. Nibiru it against the Eldritch deck and then they set four pass? Right, or do you uh, have your cards like uh, Lightning Storm, but then they draw into the Eldritch part, or excuse me, the combo part of the deck, and then it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> it's just frustrating as heck. Um, right. So what we're seeing here is the uh, least explosive version of the combo, uh, but the most consistent. Um, with one extender, uh, or with zero extenders, excuse me, uh, we can use the token made from the O-Lion to turn the token and the 001 into a Herald. We've got a sort of macro cosmos and two Omni Negates on our side of the field, backed up by all the Eldritch spells and traps in the world. And, like, this is still really good. I mean, this is leagues better than what we experienced before with other Eldritch decks when they just oh, did, yeah. like, what, set four pass? Like, you have two negations and a macrocosmos. I just got to say, seeing Herald of the Arclight being meta and actually being relevant, aside from its negation, but the macro effect, really just being difficult for a lot of players to navigate here. Um, it's just, it's just, no, it's, there's no reason why this deck isn't as strong as it is. It's absurd. Yeah, no, um, and those decks that were setting four and passing, they were winning events. So, you know, uh, the ceiling on this deck has only increased since then. Uh, we're going to be able to activate the Hakero, sent off the uh, Cursed Eldland in the end step here, likely to get something like a Scarlet Sanguine. Yep. And uh, we don't know what that set card is, but getting Lord on our turn telegraphs that it's likely something like Golden Land forever. Absolutely. Or any of the other cards like Waquero or a Conquistador is perfectly fine. You've already got two negations already, so anything else you have is just uh, further fuel in addition to it. I also want to discuss just the overall international appeal really quick of the Crush Card Cup. We have Darian here in the red, who's from Trinidad and Tobago. Represent. That is fantastic. Francesco, uh, the player in the blue, is from Italy. Uh, I think we had players from like six or seven different countries that were just in the top 16 alone. And then way beyond that, when it comes to the overall representation of the 512 so oh, a yeah. uh, big shouts to all you guys all across the world for competing in this i think it's so cool just to kind of unite a community like this in a way that's rarely seen done before and in the x4 bracket there's all the americans <laughs> funny enough i think there's two americans that are still in we saw simon in the last yes. feature match he's USA. an american usa yeah. <laughs> so he's still in uh but we're gonna get back to our feature match here we're gonna see darian fire off a curse eldland here he's gonna go ahead and uh use that to be negated i believe with the effect of his borload savage dragon that will not trigger engrave because the uh, activation is being negated so it's like it never touched the field one of those interesting interactions when it comes to these matchups that you do have to take note of we're gonna see a magician Ooh souls now come down we're it gonna pitch like a couple that was cards a normal summoned magician souls which gives yes. you some information about what's probably in the hand there unfortunately uh we're gonna magician souls for two and uh we have a valor in response to magician souls i also find it so funny that valor has found its way into this eldritch deck because not only does it represent just another disruptor but it's also a tuner so if you have to go into Halle fibrax you have another way to do so just valor has always just been such a cool utility card i love it 
And I know the comments are going to be shouting about this, um, but I am pretty sure uh, we just shortcutted there, uh, setting those two cards before activating the effect of Magician's Soul so they aren't affected by uh, the Herald of the Arclight. We're going to go ahead and set this copy of Conquistador by banishing the Sanguine that we just uh, sent to the graveyard, but... Ah, this is a terrible position to be in. You get a couple of golden yeah. land cards, which is good, but your opponent has negates set up for them already, uh, plus cards that make it hard for you to weave through combos in the form of Herald of the Arclight, and you have no real way to out those cards. So now we're going to go to Almirage here by linking off that Magician Souls. Just going to go into Secure Card. Remember, this is the Invoked variant, so that's why they are on these cards specifically. We're going to set another copy of what looks to be Scarlet Sanguine and another Unknown, and it looks like we're just going to pass the turn. Yeah, this is a little crusty. Uh, looks like we are going to try to Conquistador here. Now, Conquistador can destroy any face-up. Hitting Secure Gardener telegraphs that you're going for an OTK push, um, but seems pretty unlikely knowing your opponent is on Eldlich. Using the Scarlet Sanguine to get an Ash Blossom, did you know this can summon any zombie if you've got a Golden Lord on your side of the field? As if Ash Blossom wasn't already good enough, right? Because now that we have that Ash Blossom to our field, um, if we wanted to, we have another potential to go into a second Howie Fibrax, and it. it looks like that's what we're going to do. I hate this as well, because that means that even if you are able to penetrate this board that Francesco has assembled, guess what? You can just rebuild the whole thing again next turn. <laughs> now, they can usually only do it twice. You know, the payoff for um, playing the uh, less combo-intense version, uh, that's the version that only goes into uh, Borlode Savage and Herald of the Arclight, is that you have repeatable Hauka Fibraxes because you've got space in the extra deck, um, but usually those just translate into things like access code uh, instead of things like, um, you know, another Aurora Dawn setup, just because uh, your zones uh, are hard to manage. Um, and it looks like we're going into a three here. Unicorn is a fantastic get. Uh, will prompt one of these spell traps out. Yep, and uh, here comes the Wakato, which we're going to see get prompted in response. I do agree with you. This is uh, probably going to end up in an access code talker finish because what's nice is that very similar to all the other nightmares, you'd only need two monsters to make a card like access code talker. So you can climb your way up making cards like Unicorn to start picking away at your opponent's other cards. Then access code talker can come in, finish the job, and uh, that pretty much will represent the end of the game. We're going to link off Unicorn and Link Kribo for presumably is going to be... There he is, the big boy. Let's see how many Link monsters of different attributes. There are th uh, two, actually, so... So, not hilariously, Halka Fibrax being water is just free money for this card. Right. I mean, if again, if Halka Fibrax already wasn't good enough, I mean, it's just incredible that a card that is not typically used for anything other than just synchro summoning and crazy combo plays, the water attribute matters because there's not many water attribute cards in a majority of decks. Now, this is pretty frustrating. Um, activating the effect of Access Code Talker to pop your opponent's spells and traps against Eldritch is so powerful because they can't respond to them. And you see, that was enough to fiend a concession out of our invoked Eldritch player. Yeah, it's uh, very difficult. The fact that this card is so underrated, right? When this card was oh, first released, people were talking about it. It's like, yeah, it's good. It's fine, whatever. Like, no, the card is absurd. You can't respond to either one of its effects, either for the attack gain or for the banishing to be able to start popping your opponent's cards. Like, the card does so much. It's effectively a win condition in a myriad of different decks. And we just saw right there, it pretty much won Francesco the duel. Yeah, a lot of people think of uh, Access Code Talker in terms of the other Link Force, and like, is it an Appaloosa, is it a Boral Sword Dragon? No, uh, but it does accomplish things that those cards don't, and for that reason, it probably deserves a slot in your extra, no matter what you're playing. You saw how relevant it was in this one specifically, and um, I think we're probably going to see it made again if, uh, if they have the chance to do so. Uh, instead, we're going to see the Invoked combos this turn. Yeah, and it's funny because once you see the invoked combos, and of course Alistair gets hit by infinite permanence, it's but okay, like any good player, I was going to say like any good player, they should have invocation. But it's funny when you look at invoked Eldritch after watching Aurora on Eldritch for as much as we have, because when they end on Mechaba Pass and a few back row, it looks so much weaker, relatively speaking, oh, yeah. right? I mean, you, the options for uh, combo Eldritch are you have the ability to uh, either go into Savage plus Herald or uh, VFD if you are on a more uh, resource-intensive extra deck, um, and uh, weighing that against exactly Mechaba, I mean, it's night and day. Right, and so we're seeing the effect of Golden Lord be activated by sending a, uh, a Conquistador to the graveyard to send Cursed Outland from 
Darien's Field to the graveyard. He's also going to send the uh, Waquero in his deck to the graveyard for the Cursed Eldlands graveyard effect. So just getting set up here rather nicely, we're going to now bring out the Golden Lord to our field. We could potentially get into Mechaba here, but depending on what else we have, we may not want to. I think it's perfectly fine, though, if... Uh, oh, we need the Invocation, but again, he is the best Invoked player ever, so yeah. he should have it. Uh, but no, maybe not. Oh, it looks like he's no. just going to set one and pass. We're going to go to End Phase. We get to Banish Conquistador and Waquero for their effects, but how However, I mean, without a Mechaba and having that additional layer of negation, it might not be that difficult for Francesco to kind of find a way to navigate this so that he can land a Halle Fibrax res resolution and pretty much take control of this game. I mean, this is uh, the strength of combo versions of Eldritch in particular. You know, you're threatening both the combo and the Eldritch half of the deck at every point in the game. So you can fiend out your opponent's negates by uh, activating the hand effect of Eldritch. Oh, um, no. Activating evenly matched, you know, demanding a response to your huge haymakers. Or you can just start deploying the combo and say, uh, do you have the necessary materials to get rid of this? If not, I'm beating you with trap cards. Yep, better have it, as they say. We're going to use this effect of Scarlet Sanguine before going into end of battle phase to get our Golden Lord to the field. Here's the evenly matched, and this, unfortunately, might be game over for Darien, unless he has a response here, but it doesn't look like he does. He's going to banish Whoa. both Golden Lords, his Secure Garden, and one of his back rows. I think he just wanted the Scarlet Engrave for a following turn but if there's any way oh cosmic oh, cyclone as a follow-up this is just going to be free real estate for francesco to establish any sort of combo here if he has jet synchron that just might be the end of the game yeah um he, even just the trap card half of the deck uh probably does it uh there can be only one a very interesting keep uh probably afraid of the jet synchron uh portions of the combo of course it cannot establish uh its combo through that card um and i do like that defensive keep uh with sending the uh Scarlet Sanguine to the graveyard, but two L Liches in the graveyard, or in the face down banished zone, means you are going to be way behind in terms of the resource uh, game. The deck that is the combo deck is also now the deck with the most powerful control options, and that's a terrible scenario to be in. So Francesco brought out a copy of Magician Souls. He sent a oh here we go. So he yeah, sent the, yep he sent a Conquistador and his Eldland to the graveyard to draw a couple cards, drawing into Effect Veiler. And look exactly what I said in the previous game. He's now able to use that Effect Veiler as a tuner because he had not normal summoned. Go into Halle Fibrax and he effectively has full combo here. At the very least, this will represent a Herald of the Arclight and a Borlot Savage Dragon. But with Darian only on two cards plus that Scarlet Sanguine that's going to be in his hand it is going to be extremely difficult for him to come back from this. Not to mention Francesco gets everything that's in his graveyard that's going to resolve. It looks like it's just a Conquistador, but that's perfectly fine. They get you a Golden Lord. So if you have any of your Golden Land spells and traps in hand, those will be turned online as well. And I mean, this is why this deck is so powerful. It threatens both halves of this combo at any given time. It can play the powerful haymakers that equalize game states and follow it up with an unbeatable board like this. I mean... Ah, just really, really concerning. Down comes the Savage, activating the effect of Olion, and down will come the Herald shortly after. This is so rough, and uh, I, I I gotta feel so bad for Darian here because going he went first, he went first, and this is what ended up happening. I mean, this has just shown the evolution of this deck and just how more powerful this Aurordon version can be if it's you know it, it's it's so hard to defeat this deck at both axes that. I don't know. I, I don't know how Darian's going to play out of this. Uh, you would need... Yeah, you'd need some unreal nonsense. Uh, a way to proc the Scarlet Sanguine early, I expect, followed by, I don't know, exactly sphere mode. Well, even, like, double evenly. Like, you need, like, Dark Ruler evenly, I think, to even have a chance here. And that's, like, still a, a tall ask, right? <laughs> yeah, you'd need Dark Ruler evenly, and then the Sanguine and Graveyard can translate into a Golden Land spell or trap, but that's still a two-turn clock before you get your Eldritch online. Well, here comes Alistair. That is not the card you want here. This can easily just eat and negate for Borlode Savage Dragon. It looks like it's going to. You still have Herald of the Arc Light up. It doesn't even challenge it, the Herald. No, not even. We're going to go ahead and banish this copy of Scarlet here. This allows us to get any of our Golden Land spells and traps. We're going to get Conquistador, but unfortunately, both of our Golden Lords are banished from that evenly matched in the previous turn, so we can't even convert that into a threat with the copy of Golden Lord. Even then, that would just bait out the negation of Herald of the Arc Light 
anyway, but at least we'd have one other card to work with here. And he's just going to pass. That's so unfortunate. We're going to see Scarlet on the end phase for Francesco be activated. We're going to get Golden Lord. He has an Ash Blossom, but I definitely don't think that's going to be enough. And Harold's just going to negate it because at this point, he pretty much just has a lock on the game. Mm hmm and uh, before we uh, get comments talking about it, you can activate Ash Blossom under Herald. It just has to be discarded. And so now we're going to go ahead and... Oh, man, this is, uh, this is rough. Oh, it was, <laughs> it was Scarlet Sanguine plus a Golden Land trap. Unbelievable. We're going to banish this all Mirage here. Uh, doesn't even matter. He just wants that for material. Uh, if we can just link off into Axe, and he has Jet Safe Rod. Oh, my God. Talk about <laughs> kicking him while they're down. We can just go into another Hall of Fibrax. We can get into our Axis Code Talker, and that's just the end of the game. I mean, there's no way that Darien is going to come back from this. So unfortunate. But uh, oh, yeah. just a powerful demonstration from Francesco here of the Aurorodon Eldritch deck. I mean, we've already seen this deck before, but I mean... Wow, just incredible. Uh, I can't help but have my eye on Jet Synchron as the potential card to ban out of this. It's critical to so many of the combos and enables these one-card access code talkers that are just fantastic at equalizing game states. It is frighteningly powerful, and for that reason, I think uh, it might not be too long for this world. Here we go, seeing a similar play as before, using Nightmare Unicorn. Oh, we're not even, are we even using the effect? We're not even oh, using the effect. We're just using we're just... it as a three to give this guy more. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we're just going to go into Axis Code Talker here, and now we're going to use that effect. We can get rid of all of our opponent's cards, cannot be responded to, and we are going to have more than enough damage to win this game. And Francesco moving on to the top four in the Crush Card Cup, summoning off this Golden Lord and swinging in for well beyond lethal. Um, good job to Darian making it this far. It was cool to see uh, the one lone representative from Trinidad and Tobago, but... Francesco moving on to the top four. Incredible. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you in the top four.